Hello and welcome back to the High School Sports Beat brought to you by Alfred State College. This is the High School Notebook brought to you by Duncan. America runs on Duncan. And this morning we welcome the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> He's known as Trabs, but he's Matt Trabold. Wham 13's old Matt Trabold. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. Uh, we look forward to talking to some lacrosse with you. Sounds good to me. Matt, sectional semifinals are upon us. A lot of great storylines this year for girls, the girls' side of lacrosse. What are some of those storylines that you are, have, have keyed in on? Well, one of the top storylines for me is the golden era of Rush Henrietta girls lacrosse. With that sport in this section, you don't really think of Rush Henrietta. Before 2018, it was a very long time, 11 years since they were even in a sectional final. And this time around, I mean, last year, they made the sectional final. And this year, 14-2, and two, with huge wins over other Giants, I mean, defending sectional champs. They beat Brighton. They beat Penfield. They beat Spencerport, Canandaigua. And this resurrection for them is really coming with a Fab Five, is what they call it, of commits D1 that caliber, and it's five upperclassmen that have been really pushing this thing along. And you look at Syracuse commit Kate Mascheski, you look at Towson commit Gabby Garrett, and another one on the defensive side, which doesn't always get a lot of love in lacrosse, don't score goals as much, Grace Nothnagel, who's going to Albany. And even throwing in one of their star sophomores, Madalena Schmitz, in the open field in the games I've seen this season, not sure there's a quicker player, as much wheels in that facet of the game as Madalena Schmitz. And it's just so impressive to see this because, like I was saying a second ago, you're just not used to hearing Rush Henrietta girls lacrosse kind of hand in hand. Sure, Rush Henrietta, we always associate him with track. We associate him with great boys basketball, girls basketball. D1 commits, though. We've had plenty of them here in uh, Section 5. It's good to see uh, Rush Henrietta getting those uh, D1 commits. What do we have from the boys' side going into these semifinals? So the thing I look at the most, and there's plenty of good storylines, it has to be Brighton. Brighton's kind of like Rush Henrietta. You're not really synonymous. You're thinking of them in this sport. They've had scrappy games over the years against really big name teams. They've had D1 commits like you were talking about a second ago, but this is different. Right now, this season, they have a Donald Benedict coach at the helm. He's a first year head coach and they're having their best year, at least in my recent memory. You have first year head coach, you have a 2018 All-American in Brady McDermott. He's at Yale now. What's gonna happen? His little brother, Casey McDermott, that was the one guy you knew was going to be a big player for them this season, Johns Hopkins commit. But the question, who is going to be around him? And the guy that stepped up, Lucas Stanett, a junior. He has had 62 goals. He led all of Section 5 this regular season in scoring, had 88 points overall with assists played into that. And alongside him, a couple sophomores. His little brother, Olin Stanett, had 35 goals himself. 13-3 and three in the regular season, and they had two program-defining wins against Victor, who three years ago was number one in the country, and against a 2017 state champ in Syracuse powerhouse Christian Brothers Academy. Great stuff. Good to see little brothers coming out of their big brother's shadows. Good to see that. Matt, thanks for coming aboard. Happy to have you on uh, the High School Notebook. Thanks for having me on.